this one before as well, the red panda. Originally, it was thought to be from the bear family, which is Ursidae. Then it was classified with the raccoons, which is Procyonidae. And then finally, they're like, yeah, we don't know what it is. So it got its own family, which is Alluridae, and that's where it has been for a while. So that's why it's called a panda, because pandas are in the family Ursidae. Um, it's, it's not even really a panda. It's, it's so weird that it is in its own family, Alluridae, and that's where it's staying. But for a while it was an Ursidae, for a while it was a Procyonidae, and now it's an Alluridae. But it's just one example of weirdness that happens with classification. Now, once something is does have a name, we can figure out what that name is by using what's called a dichotomous key. This doesn't help us once, you know, if it's something brand new, if it's never been discovered before. But if it has been discovered before, if it's something that we know, okay, this, this is something out there, but what is it? We know it's been discovered, but how do we figure out what it is? We can use a dichotomous key. A dichotomous key helps someone identify something by giving us two options, die for two. And we are going to practice using dichotomous keys um, because it is a very important tool that scientists have developed, and they're really not too difficult to use. So we're going to practice using them, and we're actually going to be making our own as well. And the dichotomous key is going to be used on um, a test also, so you need to make sure you understand how to use it so you can use it on the test. They're really not that difficult, and really it's best to just jump right in and use an example as a way to, instead of trying to describe what it's like.
So, so do we enjoy the best part of our meeting? Okay, which is the group three. So we have smooth and two graduates. So you have five. What is five? Magnolia. Leaf is edge is smooth or leaf is lobe. So it's this lobe. would be like a lobe. That's a smooth. Is lobe like G? Yeah, so lobe okay. would be like F here. See how this has got like these lobes? That's what I thought. Yeah. So lobe would be like F. So then, magnolia would be correct. Um, so let's try a different one. Let's try G. See if you can identify G. Got, they're non needles, so we go to three. Simple leaves are compound. Well, they're compound because there's multiple. So that means we're going to question seven. So they're attached at a single point or they're attached at multiple points. So if they're attached at multiple points, that'd be this one. But they're attached to single points, so that would make it a chestnut. I thought chestnut was going to be like F. I thought it was F. F. Yeah. F is actually an oak. Oh. I know F is an oak, but I'm talking about like the leaves attached. Yeah. I thought that's that, that one. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually one whole leaf, according to how trees are made. Isn't that weird? This, these are considered leaf lids, and this is one whole leaf. Trees are weird. Trees are weird. All right. Um, now looking at birds. If we were to pick a bird, um, we could identify these out based on their beaks. And this is what Darwin did with his finches in the Galapagos Islands. He looked at finches and he looked at the beaks of the finches and he was able to identify them out. So if we were to, and we'll do this one together because this one's a little bit harder, we'll do W. So the beak is relatively long and slender or the beak is relatively stout and heavy. So in this case, the beak is stout and heavy, so we go to two. The bottom surface of the lower beak is flat and straight. Mm -hmm. So this is a geospiza. He's a geospiza, because the bottom surface is flat and straight, so this is a geospiza mm -hmm. bird. <laughs> so this would be its genus name. That's why it's funny. All right, so dichotomous keys can be simple, like the ones we just did. Those are pretty simple, or they can be quite complex. I remember when I was in college, we had to learn dichotomous keys, and they were really complex. They had us counting like the ridges on the teeth of like mice in the skulls. It was complicated, really complicated. Or like they, we were measuring the tails of field mice, and comparing them to the back feet, and like the feet were this many centimeters, and the tails were this thing, and it, it can be quite complicated sometimes. So the ones we were looking at were really simple, and I just don't. I want you to understand that not all of them are that simple. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to give you guys a really complicated one. I'm not complicated. Well, good, no. but. Not all of them are going to be as easy as that. Um, some of them can get quite complicated. So here's a complicated one. Um, we are not going to do some that are this complicated. But a lot of times they'll give you like a cheat sheet down here like this is a dorsal fin. This is a pelvic fin. Um, this is called a caudal fin. So that you can kind of figure out what they're referring to. But imagine looking at one of these like you just went fishing and you got this weird looking fish and you're like, well, what kind of fish is that? And then you look up a dichotomous key and you have to figure out what it is. That's much harder to do. Now, thankfully, we have cool internet to help us figure out what these are. So honestly, a lot of times, you don't have to do a dichotomous key anymore. Um, my brother actually showed me, it's called Google Lens. You guys know what Google Lens is? Yeah. Is it a Google Lens camera? 
Yeah. So it's you, it's an app. It's just Google app, and then you find oh, wait, the lens it, button. You like take a picture of it, and it shows you exactly what it is. It does. I and it's it on the shoes so cool. Right now. Um. And so I actually use that a lot, and it tells you what it is. I mean, I was trying to show you on my work. I don't think you can do it on the phone. No, you can't. It's on the phone. But it is so helpful. It'll tell you plants. It'll tell you rocks. It'll tell you all kinds of stuff. Um, so I went a little crazy with that once I figured what that, that out. And you can identify lots and lots of things. Um, so technology is pretty awesome that you don't even really need a dichotomous key anymore. So you can make a dichotomous key. And in fact, we are going to make dichotomous keys as practice. And we're going to make dichotomous keys tomorrow. So we're going to um, do an activity tomorrow where we make a dichotomous key. Um, but to make a dichotomous key is actually quite simple. So let's see. Let's say we needed to make a dichotomous key about these. The first thing you would do is divide this into two groups. How would you divide this into two groups? Pen and pencil. So we've got. Oh, that's why I heard in there. No, you'd split it. How many are there? One, two, three, four. And there's an expo marker in there. Well, there are many ways you could do it. There's many ways you could do it. And the way you guys do a dichotomous key and the way they do a dichotomous key could be completely different, and that's okay. You could do the office. It doesn't matter because it this the thing is dichotomous keys can start off different, but as long as you're getting down to the same result, it doesn't matter how it starts. So you guys could do ink and lead. You guys could one group could do pen or pencil. It doesn't matter because you're still going to get down to the same end result. You could do color because I've got two purple ones in here. You could do purple and not purple. And you could start off that way. You could do ink or lead. You could do pencil or not pencil. Is it a pencil? Is it not a pencil? Pencil? Not a pencil. Is it purple or not purple? Is it a marker or not a marker? It doesn't matter how you start it. The important thing is you divide it into two groups. And then you take those two groups. And you say, okay, question number one, is it a marker or is it not a marker? If it's a marker, then go to question two, okay? Is it yellow or is it black? If it's yellow, it's a highlighter. If it's black, it's an expo, expo marker. Now then you go to question four. If, is it purple or is it not purple? If it's purple, then go to question whatever. You see, you keep dividing it into two groups, and you keep dividing it into two groups. Every time you divide it into two groups. And then eventually you break it down and you can divide it in black. And you just keep dividing it down. So tomorrow you're going to work in two groups, and I'm assuming you work by tables, but you can divide yourself however you like. Um, but when you make these dichotomous keys, it's perfectly fine that, and it's expected that your keys are going to be different from each other. And then you're going to switch and you're going to solve each other's dichotomous keys. So it would be quite silly, actually, and quite interesting if your keys were exactly the same. Because it's going to be perfectly normal that your keys start off different from each other. Okay? So that's what we're going to do tomorrow is make dichotomous keys. For today, though, your assignment is actually working with the um, identifying domains and the kingdoms and working a little bit more with those that we started with last week. So we have the scientific name assignment, and then in Google Classroom, you'll see it's called identifying domains. So we're expanding on that a little bit more with the identifying domains. Remember, we have the three domains, the eukarya, the archaea, and the... Um, bacteria domain and then the kingdoms that fall under those so we will expand on those a little bit more and then we will work on the um, dichotomous key tomorrow so
scientific name assignment due this Friday, the identifying domain assignment due this Friday, and then tomorrow we'll be working with the guide comments piece. Questions? All right, get to work.